What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to be talking about Scream 6 in this video here today. More specifically, going over Sidney Prescott's role in that film that Nev Campbell, of course, did not return for due to a pay dispute that happened between her and Spyglass. She's going to be returning in Scream 7 after all that's been resolved. Kevin Williamson is directing, yada, yada, yada. But this is coming from Hello Sydney, who has proven themselves to be reliable in the past when it comes to all things related to the Scream franchise. They were able to gain access to a copy of a script that was written in February of 22, a much different copy than the copy I had been talking about, in which Sydney herself still was pretty lackluster in the story. Uh, all that's going to be subjective, but to me, she's still pretty lackluster, and it doesn't even really justify her appearance in a way that is in line with the character and everything that she's been through and what they told us about her in screen four. So according to Hello Sydney, who again gained access to a look at this script that was written in February of 22, Sydney's first appearance in Scream 6 would have occurred after Dr. Stone's murder, who in this version is watching Stab 2. We would have seen Tori Spelling reprise her role as a movie Sydney, saying, I can't believe I have to go through all of this again. It then cuts to Sydney, who was dropping off her three daughters ages 10, 8, and 4 years old, dropping them off at school. The oldest is named Hannah, so that's a potential name we could see in Scream 7. Now, of course, since because this screenplay was not used, this is not guaranteed to be their actual names, and nor is it guaranteed that Sydney will have three kids in Scream 7, although everything pointed to her having three kids. Sid learns about Ghostface in New York from a school mom and rushes home to pack. Sydney's husband, Mark Kincaid, now a sheriff, confronts her. It's and then this is what Mark says. You spent the last 25 years running away from this and now you want to run towards it. My thoughts exactly. Sydney says to him, I need to make sure it doesn't end up on our doorstep because sooner or later it always does. Mark then tells her, you keep running after this. Someday you're not going to come back. Again, my thoughts exactly. It's funny how Mark is being given the smart dialogue here. <laughs> Then Sydney arrives in New York after Annika's death and accompanies the gang to the shrine. In this version, it's a, a storage warehouse discovered in this version by Kirby, not Gail. In an amusing bit, Sydney and Gail are equally baffled at Kirby's FBI status. Billy Loomis's mask is on display here, luring Samantha towards it. Sid, not Tara. Sid, not Tara, asks what she is doing in addition to the family conversations between Sam and Gail was initially a conversation between Sam and Sydney with a focus on Sam's abandonment issues. The story then follows the group to the Central Park sequence where Tara, Mindy, and Chad try to find the killer among people in the park while Sam talks with Ghostface. They only stop when Chad asks, isn't this how Uncle Randy died? This distraction leads to Ghostface being one step ahead of our heroes with Sam and Sid, not Tara, stealing Bailey's cop car to try and save Gail. So, Tara seems to have been filling in a lot of the roles Sydney would have had. As Sam and Sid would never make it in time, Sam contemplates calling Danny. In this version of the story, Sam and Danny are flirtatious neighbors but do not have an established relationship prior to the events of the story. Sydney asks, or can he finish her off? Or he can finish her off. Is it possible that he's the killer? Sam ends her call to Danny mid-dial, but Danny somehow shows up to save Gail anyway from a final fatal stab in her apartment. Paramedics take Gail into the ambulance. When asked by a paramedic if she is family, Sydney reflects on their shared experiences and indicates she is and goes with Gail to the hospital, leaving Sam, Tara, and the others to formulate their own plan. Mark calls and Sid updates him on Gail's condition. Devastated, she replies, but everyone leaves these girls. She, Sid promises to return to Seattle as soon as she knows Gail is okay, but later breaks this promise when Sam calls from the warehouse where the third act begins. There, Kirby is stabbed by Ethan with Charlie's knife and ambiguously left for dead. As Kirby is not seen a reference again after this point in the script, Sydney arrives at the last minute to drop the TV that killed Stu onto Ethan's head, saying, second time I've done that, if you can believe it, works every time. The ending includes Sam tossing Billy's old mask into a wet gutter and following Tara and Sydney into the light. Now, this, do you see how this somehow makes Kirby's ending worse because she's left ambiguously dead or alive for the second time? And Sydney again feels like an afterthought in this. She willingly just got, got involved because someone at school decided to open up a wound to her, say, hey, Ghostface is out in New York. Why? I wish I could get my hands on this and read this. 
because this is not clicking for me. This is not clicking at all. Sydney becoming Captain Savaho is not what Sydney Prescott should be doing. It's not even believable for the character. A character who in Scream 4 was on a book tour for a book titled Out of Darkness where she was talking about overcoming that trauma. Now you basically are living as a victim of this trauma when you want to willingly insert yourself into it all the time. Her husband, again, like I mentioned, Mark, it's funny how his dialogue bits are speaking to the part of the fandom who are not wanting her to be a victim her whole life. Sydney in this storyline is basically willingly becoming a victim in her mind to make sure that this doesn't end up on her doorstep. Baby girl, it's not going to end up on your doorstep because it's not about you. It, it, was, it wasn't even about her. You went out of your way to New York. Nothing about what I just went over indicated that they were even after Sydney. Granted, of course, they probably would have been if you decided to go there. It's just all very not Sydney like she seems like she's still living in that darkness she's chasing that darkness now to try to avoid it coming after her children when she shouldn't even be worried about stuff like that she shouldn't be worried about that i feel like that is so against the character so against where she has worked her way to the point in life that she has worked her way to from scream one through four having hearing that from a school mom and then just going completely mama bear i get it to a degree but Throwing yourself out there to the wolves. I think you should knuckle down with your husband and kick rocks. I think the way they wrote it in Scream 6, the one we actually got is far more believable than this. I just, I, I can't vibe with this. Not at all. Especially when the story is still mostly about Sam and Tara and what Sam did to Richie. Oh, I don't know, man. I, I, I cannot vibe with this. I, I strongly believe that when Sydney Prescott is in screen movies, she needs to be the center. She needs to be the focus. She needs to be the target by Ghostface. She does not need to be the one hunting Ghostface. I just can't. I can't vibe with this. It doesn't sit right. What happened in Scream 5 was acceptable because of who Dewey was. This is not acceptable because she's also not even doing it for Sam and Tara. She's doing it for her daughters. Daughters you could protect by easily just staying at home, ma'am. I cannot believe they wrote her like this. Granted, some of you might like this. I, I don't vibe with this. I feel it betrays the character altogether. And I think that when it comes to Ghostface, Sydney herself should just be the main target. She should not be someone who is thrusted into these stories, willingly trying to get involved. If you don't want to have her as the main target, don't put her in your stories. Please don't. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You can this video in the description. I have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.